chriswahabiking.com and we have the new DYS H King Excite style frames. Now these come in two different flavors, a 250 and a 320. Now these are also the really nice thing about these, these are uh, plug and flies, meaning uh, they're basically completely built, ready to go. All you need to do is plug in a receiver, do a little configuration and you are up flying. And we've even taken care of the configuration for you on these particular ones. We'll go into that in a second. Let's go ahead and dive into these and take a look at these. Uh, first thing, when I open up these boxes, you're gonna notice these nice cases. Let me go ahead and set that aside and grab this one as well. So it comes with a nice hard hard pack or a soft case, but uh, it's you know somewhat rigid, so it's great for transportation, and storage, and portability. You can just slip this right into your backpack, and it's good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the first one here and kind of do an opening. Now this is our 320. Uh, here's the quad. I'm gonna go ahead and zip it out and take a look at this, and it comes with uh, instructions as well as all the uh, needed accessories. Now the needed accessories that it has right here are basically your prop adapters, your props, uh, cables, extra hardware, and the landing skids that go on to this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the frame. First thing you're gonna notice is that it's collapsible or foldable, uh, meaning obviously it's portable and it just goes right in there. It's got some really nice thumb screws, so it doesn't require any additional hardware or tools uh, to be able to uh, extend this out and use it right out there into the field. I'm gonna go ahead and just extend these out, just kind of lock them down so we can get a visual on this. And there we go. Uh, there's the frame and as you can see it's pretty much all set uh, set up for it um, now of course we've got the landing skids I'll go ahead and pop those on so we can take a look at this but let's just go ahead and go over some of the features we've got a real nice uh, vibration isolation plate right up here on the top that comes with a strap great for uh, action cams such as the Mobius to grab some uh, HD on that also has right up here a mounting for your FPV camera if you don't want to uh, use the uh, the Mobius as your, your main FPV camera it's got plenty of uh, spaces and provisions all the way around the frame for your other gear such as receivers uh, FPV transmitters and the landing gear gives you plenty of room as well as you've got a nice gap spacing right in here for the battery to be slung uh, either on the bottom or on the top comes pre-wired up right there with an XT60 now the ESCs what's uh, really interesting on these ESCs is that they're integrated right into the board they can be replaced if they're damaged you can just solder them off uh, but it has solder pins that goes directly to the power distribution board and your motors laid out right over here uh, they're already pre-configured and pre-wired right over here to your CC3D uh, flight controller hardware. Uh, so everything's done there. Now these uh, ESCs are rated right at 20 amps, designed perfectly for these motors, uh, more than capable with these particular motors, uh, as well as a running BL software, BL Heli software. Uh, so you can do some configuration if you have to on that, but no configuration is necessary. These things are ready to rock and roll right out of the box. Now this was designed and built uh, for us by DYS. So it's using the DYS uh, ESCs. It's also using the DYS BE series motors which we've sell, everyone knows they're uh, fantastic motors, you can read and review on the BE series of motors, uh, there they go. So this is the, uh, the 320 frame, you can see it's a little bit larger, it allows for a little bit larger prop. Uh, we ship it right now with a 645, where the, uh, the 250 version of this frame, which has uh, pretty much got the same features as this one is, just a little bit shorter, it runs with five inch propellers uh, on that. So let me go ahead and grab out the landing gear so you can take a look what that looks like. Comes with some uh, nice spares, like I mentioned, prop adapters, all the necessary hardware and here is your landing gear and you can see how thick and nice the uh, the carbon is on this on these arms as well really nice thick uh, four millimeter arms as well as uh, landing skids on that carbon plate upper and lower decks on that and PCB right here onto the bottom now also on this PCB it does have a BEC built right in so that's not necessary uh, basically all you really need to do is plug in your receiver jump into the config set up the transmitter and you're out flying. To install the landing skids, you basically just put this on one side. And there we go, we got the landing skids on that. You can see in the nice uh, ground clearance right underneath there, you can easily clear a, a 2200, uh, which is actually ideal for this particular frame. Easily fly for over 10 minutes with a 2200 three cell on this particular frame. So there we go, that's the Excite 320. Let's go ahead and look at the, uh, the 250 as well. All right, same thing. You've got your instructions and all your prop adapters, propellers and wiring right up here. And right away, you can see the frame on this one is a little bit narrower, a little bit cleaner, designed for pure sport. Uh, FPV action, uh, same thing, it's a folding frame. So we'll go ahead and put these arms out and it's more of a, uh, a H style frame where the, uh, the Excite 320 is more of an X style frame. 
Uh, so this is definitely gonna carve a little bit better. Let me turn it around here. Uh, it just has the uh, FPV cam up there, no clean and dirty for like say a Mobius, but of course you can put one on with a little gel pad if you want on that. Uh, definitely uh, more agile. Um, but it's just a little cleaner setup of its bigger brother. So uh, all the, uh, the rest of the same features as far as the ESC, the flight controller, the motors, uh, all pre-wired, all pre-configured. All you really need to do is just plug in your receiver and, and that's it. Now talking about that, plug in the receiver, we worked with uh, OpenPilot on this particular project and we've actually got these up into their new cloud configuration, which is their latest release with their uh, GUI or, or copter control software. So you can just go ahead and jump right into that and uh, download these frames directly. All the PIDs are set up for you, as well as a couple different banks for depending on your flying style. If you're, if you're more of a, a, a easy flyer, if you're highly aggressive, we've got banks one, two, and three set up for you that. Let's go ahead and dive into that. We're going to show how easy it is going to be to uh, uh, set up the frames. Right now, mechanically, I just want to show you what these frames included, how easy they are just right out of the box. You just got to basically hook up your receiver, plug the wires on in. We're going to go ahead and flip my over, uh, pull out my computer, and we'll show you how to do that. All right, so I've got our DYS HK320 uh, ready for uh, setup. So like I mentioned, we were just talking about everything it includes. It's pre-built to this point. Everything's set up from your ESCs, the wiring, uh, flight controller, motors. All you need to do at this point is get your transmitter, get yourself a receiver and a battery. We're going to just go ahead and configure these two together real quick and you'll be up and flying easy. Now you go ahead, what you need to do is go ahead and download the latest OpenPilot Copter Control GUI. Um, uh, and basically it's just download free. Latest is 15.2 uh, and what is really nice about this is that this has been configured a big uh, uh, thanks to Failsafe who's uh, able to get these frames up onto the cloud configurator. So all you need to do is plug this in, you can select it from a drop down and it's going to throw all the PIDs and, and settings right to the frame so you don't need to do any of this and, and worry about that. So uh, let's go ahead and dive right into it. So first thing is the receiver. You've got a couple options to go ahead and plug into the, uh, the CC3 Open Pilot. Uh, PWM, which is standard uh, pin for pin, you know, uh, rudder to rudder. Uh, you've got um, PPM, which is a single wire, same as SBUS, and you have, so you have PPM, you have SBUS, and you can also do a satellite straight into the, uh, the CC3D as well. Uh, for this particular setup, I'm gonna go ahead and just do the standard, the simplest, uh, which is just our, our PWM. I got our uh, orange uh, RX615 uh, right here. I've got uh, the six wires right on in. And when you get the wiring harness, uh, all of them are gonna just have a single pin right in here. And one of them has three wires, uh, the red, black, and the white. That's uh, going to provide a, a voltage to the receiver to power the receiver itself. And uh, what's really nice is, is that this maps the channels in the GUI itself. So you don't need to worry about what wire goes to what channel uh, versus your transmitter that you're using. It makes absolutely no difference. It's completely mapped by the GUI, so it's extremely easy to, uh, to set up. So basically, just plug these all in. All you need to make sure is that, that that single wire is lined up with the signal wire. Make sure it's not flipped around on the ground side and just go ahead and wire those on in. So go ahead and plug that in. Pre-bind up your receiver with a, a five volt source so that uh, that's uh, all taken care of. I've already bound it to our uh, T6 uh, transmitter right over here. So we've just got that wire uh, plugged on in. P put a piece of Velcro on that, it allows you to put it right to the frame when we're done or a little piece of sticky tape and it's all set. So all I need to do, uh, this is right out of the box, is go ahead and take a receiver. I randomly have plugged these wires on in and you're gonna see how that's set up a little bit uh, in a, just a second. I'm gonna just plug that right into the side of the CC3D. All right. Uh, we've got a USB port right onto the back side, and we're going to go ahead and plug that into our uh, GUI right over here, and it's going to uh, uh, walk right through the vehicle setup wizard. This is a step-by-step -step process, extremely easy to do, uh, basically nothing that uh, you need to worry. Just follow the instructions and, and this video, and you're going to have this up and flying in about 20 minutes. So let me go ahead and plug in the USB here. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and give that just one second to auto detect. All right. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and do the vehicle setup wizard, the big green thing set up here in the corner. I'm gonna click on this. Uh, it's gonna say, make sure we remove all the props, uh, you know, uh, reduce the risk of injury, make sure the battery's not plugged in. Absolutely, uh, we're, we're set up for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Next thing it's gonna do is ask for us for an upgrade. And since this is the latest GUI, this board definitely needs to have the latest firmware. They've got a match and it's gonna give us a warning on that. So go ahead and click upgrade. And what it's gonna do is uh, check the, uh, the ROM in the uh, flight controller. Uh, it's gonna go ahead and flash it, upgrade it, and then reboot it. It's about a uh, 40 second uh, uh, process. Uh, let's go ahead and it's uh, setting all the, uh, the settings. 
and as soon as it's done it's going to reboot and we know we're good to go because right down here in the bottom we're going to get an error that it doesn't recognize the usb just ignore that you can go ahead and close this because as soon as it reboots it's going to be uh, re-auto detected and we're going to get a little next button right over here There it goes. There we go, and we've got the next button, so I'm gonna go ahead and click that. So we've got the latest firmware onto the board. Um, and now the best thing is, is it auto detects the board, everything's good, so we've got the, uh, the next button. We're just gonna go ahead and click that. Now this, uh, at this point, you're gonna uh, just pick what type of receiver you put in. If you got a, uh, like a 615, which is actually capable of uh, doing PPM out, you can just do the single wire, the three wires on, on, on over. Uh, this one's set up for PWM. If you're doing a SAT or S bus input, just go ahead and select it from the, uh, the Dropbox right over here. Since I have uh, standard PWM, I would just go ahead and select that, but it's just as simple as clicking on it. I'm gonna click that and hit uh, next. It's gonna ask what type of vehicle this is. This is a multi-rotor, it's already the default. We're gonna click on that. It's gonna show us our motor layout and configuration. We don't need to worry about this because this comes right out of the box, ready to rock and roll, everything's wired up. So we're just gonna go ahead and click next on that. Uh, as far as the ESCs, it gives us uh, three options, standard arrow ESCs, fast ESCs, which are like Simon K, BL Heli, which this is, and also the one shot option. Uh, we, what we want is just the rapid ESC, the middle one. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. Um, so basically it knows everything we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and click next. Uh, next thing it wants to do is calculate the bias between the gyro and the accelerometer. Basically find that nice level. You don't want to move the, uh, the quadcopter in this process. Make sure it's nice and flat and level on a table. We're just going to click calculate and just kind of hands off. Let it do its thing. Bam, there we go. Uh, as soon as the next lights up, we are set and we're just going to go ahead and click on that. Now, the next thing we're got to do is do an ESC calibration. What it's going to do is we're going to check all these boxes, meaning uh, the battery's disconnected, the props are off of it. It's going to send a high signal to the ESCs. We plug this in. We're going to have the ESCs tone out for us, uh, meaning that it goes into uh, calibration mode. And then we hit stop, and what it does is bring down the PWM, which then calibrates the ESC. Um, let's go ahead and plug it in and do that. What I need to do first is check all the boxes and hit start. Now we've got a high signal, so we're gonna plug it in. We've got the start. Okay, we have get that tone, which means that it's in um, auto detect. So what I'm gonna do is hit stop. It drops these and it brings it on down. There we go. And our ESCs have been calibrated, it's pretty simple. We're just gonna hit next on that. Uh, this gives us the layout again. Like I said, this has already been done and built, so we don't need to worry about this. We're going to click Next. This allows us to check motor direction and spin if you need to do that. We don't need to do that. We're going to go ahead and jump onto the next one. All right, this is the magic. This is where OpenPilot and Failsafe came in, and, uh, and we've worked with them. DYS built this amazing frame, but it is all up on the cloud configurator. It's all pre-configured for you. All you need to do is select it from the dropdown, and it's going to flash all the params right to the board. And then all we really need to do is set up your transmitter at that point. So if we take a look at the dropdown, what we're going to do is go ahead and find the HKing 320, which is uh, this one. We're going to select it. It's got a picture of it right there on the screen. It's got all the matching params, the props, the motors, everything that we've uh, set up on this, and it is set. So we're just going to click Next and save it. There's all your PID tuning. It's all done for you. It's as easy as that. So it's going to reboot it. You're going to hear the ESCs reset and rearm. There we go. Done talking to me. Ah, one more. All right. And then the last thing we got to do is just set up our transmitter um, on this. And, and that's pretty much it. So uh, we've got a, a transmitter setup wizard. Like I was mentioning, it didn't matter where we plug these in. Uh, because we're going to go ahead and map this. So it uh, disables the arming ability, uh, meaning like if it had props on it, it's not going to arm through the calibration process. It's just a nice warning, uh, really nice there for safety. So we're just going to click OK. We're going to click Next on the screen. At this point, it's going to ask us uh, the type of transmitter we have, a helicopter or an acro or airplane style mode. It's always best to set up multi-rotors with a standard arrow because most of the flight control boards already do all the mixing and everything we need uh, for it, so we don't need to do that. So just go ahead and pick acro uh, mode or arrow mode. 
uh, set up your transmitter for an airplane um, and just set it up for a minimum of five channels with a three position switch. You can do it with a two position switch, you're just limiting the flight modes that you're gonna have available if you only have a two position switch. But anyway, we're just gonna pick acro, but helicopter mode uh, is right there. Uh, next is the mode, whether you're in mode one, two, three, four, however you fly. Uh, I fly mode uh, two and this is a mode two transmitter, so I'm gonna go ahead and click next on that. Now this is the cool part where it maps the channels. All it's looking for is the PWMs, the change, and then it knows that that particular channel it is. On the screen, we can see the little transmitter and we can see that the throttle, since this is mode two, is moving up and down. So as soon as I move that, it's gonna go, oh, that is the channel. Oh, it would help if I turned on the transmitter. <laughs> yeah, 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 laugh at me. Okay, it's gonna bind here. Okay, it bound. Okay, now, uh, I'm gonna go back just so you guys can re-see that back. Okay, so it's moving the throttle. So I move the throttle, it knows that one. Now it's looking for Rolo or Elron. So I move that, it maps it. Uh, now it's looking for pitch, I'm just gonna move that. And yaw, so I'm gonna go ahead and move that. Now it's looking for our flight mode switch. So I've got it set up right here, a three position flap switch. So I'm just gonna move that. And now it's uh, looking for channel six over here. I've got gear, so I'm just gonna go ahead and flip that. And it's picked that up. Now, so this is only a six channel receiver, so I don't have seven and eight. So that gives us the, uh, the skip right here, skip and skip. So now it wants us to center everything up. So I'm gonna center that one up. I can't since this is a two position switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that, put everything in center, click next. Now it's gonna just do the calibration of the sticks and all the movements. So just go ahead and move them around. Gonna bring throttle down, move your switches. And that's it, we're gonna click next. Now, uh, this is the really cool point. You don't have to do anything this transmitter. Uh, CC3D allows you to do all the configuration in here, even uh, expo and transmitter rates and all that good stuff. Um, uh, this particular one, it's gonna even, uh, on this step, it's just gonna pick our uh, our channels, whether they're the correct direction or not. So we don't have to do any channel or, or uh, uh, reversing for the different ones. So all we do is put our transmitter down, we take a look at the screen, and we move our stick. And we can see right there our roll is backwards. So we'll just come up to roll and click it. Now it's going the correct direction. Let's check pitch. Pitch is going the wrong way. Click that. We'll just check it. Yaw. Yaw is wrong. How about throttle? Throttle is good to go. There we go. Our, our transmitter calibration is basically done. Uh, we're gonna click next. And that's it. What we need to do, and this is very important, you need to come right down here to the bottom and click save. Uh, once uh, save is done, uh, we're gonna click next. Now at this point, uh, the, the multi-rotor won't arm. Remember when we started this, it disabled the arming process. This is how you pick how it's going to arm. Uh, whether you want uh, down and uh, right uh, with the, uh, the yaw or to the left or both sticks in or you can do it with a switch. I just prefer it like most uh, multi-rotors just down and, and to, the, to the right on the yaw and uh, hold it for a second and it allows it to arm. So we go ahead and select that from the drop down, yaw right, save it and that's it. We are all set up on this. So we are absolutely ready to fly. All we need to do is go ahead and throw on some props, Velcro down our receiver slap the battery under uh, with the included Velcro strap and go uh, throw this up into the air. Now, a couple things that I wanna talk to you about as far as the, uh, the tuning on this particular copter. We've got multiple banks available on this. And the way that uh, Failsafe set this up is that uh, it's got um, three flight modes and we've got three banks. And out of those banks, we've got uh, 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 bank one, which is, uh, I wouldn't call it a beginner, but it's uh, more docile. Bank two, intermediate, and then bank three is full on uh, uh, hardcore acro mode. So depending on your flight preference, what I'd recommend is go ahead and fly it in bank one. If it's not aggressive enough for you, go ahead and switch to bank two. And then uh, if uh, you're an experienced pilot and just looking for a nice, uh, really nice frame that's ready to fly, um, uh, just switch it up to bank three and, and get out there and start railing it. Also the flight modes, uh, we can talk about the flight modes that uh, come in this standard. Uh, on the same screen that we just finished up on the transmitter, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and flip over to flight mode settings. Now. What's really nice is that uh, we got our three position switch and this is the only one that you might want to change in the transmitter versus changing here if you're not comfortable using the GUI. It's as easy as selecting and changing it right here on the screen, but if you don't wanna mess with any of the settings, you can just reverse this. Now, 
What I mean by that is we've got this three position switch. If I flip the switch, you can see this right here is moving. Now that's position one, position two, and position three. So uh, in position three with the, my switch in the up, I'm in rate mode, which is an acro mode. Uh, if I flip it down, uh, we are in position two, stabilize two, stabilize two is attitude, and stabilize one is attitude. Now the difference on these two different attitudes is we've got axis lock uh, and, and uh, basically a standard. One really locks them in when you uh, let go of the sticks. Uh, the other one uh, is more of a, a follow mode, kind of more sweepy. And then of course you got uh, rate mode, which is just a uh, uh, full on uh, you know, aerobatics. And there's even one above that, which is called Acro Plus, which is just absolute insanity. If you know what it is and you're, and you're a CC3D pilot, uh, just go right to Acro Plus. If, you, if you're uh, really comfortable with flying Acro, that is the absolute best mode you can do it. Now, so those are the different flight modes. So it's easy to go on this transmitter and just reverse the switch if you want those flight modes flipped around. Or if you're comfortable doing it, you can actually just go from this drop down and switch it around right over here. Now, attitude mode, uh, what's uh, nice about this is it's auto leveling. So this is really good for FPV carving. Uh, it flies really nice, but you let go of the stick, it auto levels out to that. The, the, at the rate at how aggressive that is, is uh, set up with these axis locks and those rakes. Uh, so one is, uh, is uh, uh, more more uh, locked in the less uh, uh, number two is more sweepy and then of course three is acro mode um, if you want to have ratitude i like to fly in ratitude sometimes which means it's auto leveling it's the same as attitude um, so you let go of the sticks it just auto levels on out but it still allows you to do acro and rolls and flips so you can do loops rolls flips let go of the sticks if you get disoriented and it just auto levels for you. So I personally like that mode. Uh, you can select it from the drop down, and it does it for different axes. So you can't just set it up on roll or you can, uh, but you can set up like auto leveling on roll if you do a lot of rolls, but you don't want your pitch to auto level. You can just change that or leave that on uh, uh, rate mode and then attitude on the different ones. So there's a lot of configurations and a lot of flight modes available with this particular flight controller. Like I said, right out of the box, it's gonna get you up. It's gonna get you flying. When you get more experience, you wanna dive into Open Pilot, contribute back, jump into the forums, get in a lot of information, understand these other flight modes. It's as simple as clicking them, and all you gotta do right over here is save it. Now I talked about the banks. Uh, the banks are already pre-set up for the aggressiveness on the level. And right over here, uh, if we're in stabilized one, which if I flip the switch down, we're in bank one, it's set up right over here for bank one. And we can now change that to bank two, which is our intermediate uh, pilots bank three for the more aggressive. And I'm actually gonna change right over here to our... Okay, so uh, here is the screen. And what I'm gonna do is change to the different bank and you're gonna be able to see here's bank one and these are different like uh, for this particular settings, these are your stick uh, settings, meaning how aggressive it is on the stick. Uh, when it's uh, over to the side, it's a little softer. Like think about it as having like expo or endpoint adjustment in there. But if we were to just click on bank two, you can see how this jumped over. It makes it a little more aggressive and it made it a little more aggressive in our rate mode. Uh, if we switch over to bank three, um, it changes those settings around as well as our PIDs down here. They all change with the different rates or our different banks. And those are already preset up for this particular frame. So I was just showing you how those goes. Super easy to use guys. It sounds like a lot of information, but just follow the wizard if you're not familiar with this and just do exactly what it asks for to get the receiver. Just plug in the, the wires into any pin, plug it in there, just do the, uh, the calibration, uh, calibrate your transmitter and just get out there flying. When you get more comfortable and you wanna experience some more of these other flight modes and do a lot of the, the vids that uh, people are up on the, the uh, internet flying around and get a little better as a pilot, go ahead and jump into these and change to some of those Acro Plus modes or Ratitude modes and, and definitely check it out. For you experienced pilots, this is about one of the nicest frames you can get that is an ARF standard, uh, meaning it's actual true hobby grade. We've got the DYS BE series. We've got the, uh, the Opto BE Heli 20 amp uh, ESCs, which are integrated into the frame, replaceable if necessary. You can just desolder them and pull them off. It's just a pin style that's been soldered right to the frame. Carbon setup, massive, nice four millimeter arms, four millimeter landing gear. Uh, you got your clean and dirty on this one or your uh, vibration isolation. CC3D pre-configured and the 250 of course is just gonna carve. It's just got a lot of power and it's set up for just full on acro, full on race where this one definitely can carry a little more weight, bigger battery, better flight time with this particular one. So pick the one that's best for you. Remember it comes with the cases. These are up on the new items page and as always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy flying, and I definitely want to see some videos of these uh, out there carving it up.